Hi, hello, what's up? My name is Liz and you're watching for Booking Out Loud. So today I was tagged by book loving nerd to do the bookshelf book tag. I will link her channel and her book tag down below. She's great. Check her out. So this tag has 12. <laughs> wow, not gonna do that. This tag has 12 questions and I have prepared a couple books down below. Otherwise, let's just talk about it. <laughs> Question one is how many bookshelves do you have? If you look behind me, I have three bookshelves. But in reality, these bookshelves are actually two half shelves stacked on top of each other. I tried to look for the exact model. I think I got them from Big Lots or Kmart, but I couldn't find... I, I just couldn't find it online, so I'm sorry. But these two end ones are, like I said, two half ones stacked on top of each other. And so it creates this kind of like half shelf where unless the books are really small and kind of common paperbacks, they don't fit. So if I tried to take maybe, let's say, the Stephen King book, does not fit. So I need to be very creative in fitting books on this shelf, which you can see I have been. And if you look at this other one, it's graphic novels. So yes, creative. Second question is, how many books are on your shelf or how many books do you think you have? And it's definitely not exact at all, but I think I have maybe around 300 books. It just doesn't sound right, but what I did is I counted how many books were on one shelf and then I counted how many shelves I have. So that, it's definitely a guesstimate and each shelf is gonna be so different. I mean, as you can tell, I have a huge Stephen King shelf or stack right there and there's a couple books over here. I'll show you that beautiful footage later as well. And then how do you organize your shelves? I organize my shelves by genre. This is actually the first time I've ever done that before in my life. I usually organize my books by author's last name. And then the pandemic hit. I had a lot of time on my hands and I thought I'd do something different. I don't necessarily like it, but I also don't have a lot of time on my hands to reorganize it again. And that's just what I have. So over here, I have my young adult fantasy and then I have my adult fantasy down there. And then I have my contemporary fiction and then I have my nonfiction and my classics. And then I have my TBR shelf, which has kind of bled into random. And then I have my piles of books that are also my TBR pile down on my floor over there. Life. All right, question four, what is the oldest book you have? And I looked at this in two different ways. It could be the oldest book that I have that I personally have owned, or it can be the oldest book that is on my shelf. And so, the first one for the first part is the oldest book that I have. And it's a funny story for this one. So the oldest book that I have is this Disney's Princess Collection. And I was so, so sick one day and my mom had to go out and do mom things. And she had come home and surprised me with this book when I was really young. And I still have it and it's just, it's pretty much what you'd give a young kid 
with pictures and it's just the Disney stories in a book. And I thought it was so sweet and I've never given it away. It's mine forever. But I looked at the publication date and this is from 1999. And I will not say I looked at every single publication date, but this is the book that I know that I've owned the longest or I remember owning the longest. So this is the one that I think I've owned the longest. The oldest book on my bookshelf is Pictorial History of the Second World War. So this is actually a set of four books given to me by my grandfather. And I looked at the publication date of this guy and it is from 1994. And it makes sense. He was a marine vet but it's a really really cool book it has all these wonderful pictures and I can't say I've read them but it smells like my grandparents house and it's just it's a beautiful book with a beautiful copy it has a nice well-used spine and I really love it actually the next question is, what is the newest book on your shelf? So I recently did a book haul and I'll link it above and below for you if you want to check that video out. But there's one set of books that I wasn't able to get in there just because it was literally a sale happening that weekend and I ordered them, but they came. And so the brand newest books I'm adding to my bookshelf or the brand newest book is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. Mystery, I think horror, but definitely mystery thriller. And it's a used book, so it's not brand new, but it's new to me and I count that and I'm really excited. But this is the newest book on my bookshelf. Does it count if it's on my floor? I'm counting that if it's on my floor. The next question is, what is the longest book on my bookshelf? I checked. It was going to be a Stephen King novel and it was just between it and the stand. And yes, they were very, very close. The winner of that book competition, I guess, was The Stand. No, I have not read it yet. It's going to be read eventually. I'm hoping by the end of the year. But this thing is 1,152 pages long. It is only 1,138 pages long. So about 20 pages between the two books. But this is officially my longest book on my bookshelf. And I will put you back and then the next question is, what is the shortest book on your bookshelf? I have a couple of contenders. One is definitely a winner, but I don't know if it counts for this prompt. So I'll let you, so I'll let you be the decider on that one. So the one that's, the one that's definitely a winner is The Legend of the Brog frog, bear. I think that's what the combination is. And this is a book I got from my uncle because his friend actually wrote this. And it is just, it's an adorable children's book with little pictures and stuff. And it is only 22 pages long. I don't know if a children's illustrated book counts. So I also looked for a shorter novel. And if it's a shorter novel, it's between Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman and A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. So Walt Whitman's book is 113 pages long. Whereas Virginia Woolf's book is 114 pages long. 
So we have a winner. Leaves of Grass is the shortest novel on my shelves. And yes, I have actually read this book. Number eight is what is the predominant genre on your bookshelf? Can I cheat and say fiction? So <laughs> if it's beyond fiction, I would have to say fantasy because if I combine my young adult and my adult fantasy, it takes up this whole shelf right here. Plus, because then you have some of here, this whole shelf there. So definitely fantasy is the predominant genre on these shelves. Then the next question is, have you done a bookshelf tour? No, no, I have not. I don't think I'm planning on doing a bookshelf tour anytime soon either, just because, no. I mean, would you be interested in that? Comment down below if you'd be interested in a bookshelf tour. I'll make one if you guys are, and if not, I won't. All right, go on a random number generator and then talk about that book. So I went on a number generator and I just chose which shelf and then the number. So let's do this. It was shelf number two and then number 140. So let's see where that brings us. I got to 140, which was right here. And I found The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Domas, who I also read, who also wrote The Three Musketeers. And go figure, starting right there, this is my TBR section of my shelves. So I have not read this. I've barely seen the movie. Okay, the next question is, do you have any fan merch or any other decorations on your shelf? So yes, yes I do. You wanna see all of it? So merch on my shelves. So up here I have three of these and they're just fake flowers with mason jars and I actually painted these mason jars myself and they're just fake flowers that I've accumulated over the years so handmade merch I guess and then I actually went to the University of Oregon so ducks is the mascot and I keep getting ducks as presents so this was my graduation present so I'm keeping that on my shelf right there. And if you go over here, my brother's currently at Georgia Tech University getting his PhD. And somehow we were able to find a duck and a bee mascot, which is Georgia Tech's mascot. It's fun. And then let's go back. So I have a couple of candles everywhere. And then I was actually part of the Gamma Phi Beta sorority at the University of Oregon and this is our house and so when I was a senior all of the seniors got this carved painting this carved sculpture thing of our sorority house I think it's beautiful it's a piece of art to me and I loved the house because it's just very historical so that's the house I have this beautiful little Funko Pop of Jon Snow. He's just so unhappy that I love it. So I'm gonna keep him there. A little chest that my father gave me when I was younger. And I actually have two of these on this shelf. I have this big one and then there's a small one up there. Boop. And these are floats. And they're a decoration very popular on the Oregon coast. And they're all over my house and I will stick with the vibe. And then going back, I have candle, candle, 
And this is a little pumpkin I actually made a couple years ago at a glass sculpting place. I went with my mom and a couple of friends and I picked it and I will never take it off my shelf because I made it. So therefore it stays. And I just think maybe I didn't necessarily do a great job, but it's still beautiful. I have a deer mug that I don't know how to drink out of, so it goes on my shelf. And then I have BB-8, because BB-8. And then I have a little heart, glass heart, that again, I painted myself, and I think it's pretty, so it stays on my shelf. I think that's it. Oh, more candles, because why not? Yeah, this is my shelf. I love it. Okay, and then show us your bookshelf. Okay, so this is my first shelf. So as you can see, this is young adult, young adult, young adult, and then right there it starts getting into adult fantasy, the evolution, World War Z. And this is my half shelf where I put my graphic novels and magnas. And then adult fantasy, and then we start getting into contemporary fiction. And then again, some contemporary fiction, and a little bit of some horror. And then we go to my middle shelf, where I put my Harry Potter, because that's where it fit. Some contemporary. This is my Rick Riordan, because that's where it fit. And then I get into my nonfiction and my Aragon. My second nonfiction. I have my four picture books for my grandfather, and these are my Christmas decorations for my grandmother. And then these are my classics, or what I consider classics. A lot of college books that I had to get, but I actually enjoyed, so I'm keeping. Right, on to my third shelf. So this is my insanely large stack of Stephen King, because that's how I fit them. And my miscellaneous, that's where they fit books. So these are all ones that I've read and getting into Carrie, and that's actually it. And that's where it stops on what I read. And this is the start of my TBR shelf. And my TBR shelf. And this is like one of my half weird ones. And this is actually James Patterson, all James Patterson. I haven't read it, it's from my mother. So there you go. And then I get into a weird shelf where I have Lord of the Rings, some poetry and hiking. And then this is another extremely weird shelf where I have some teaching books, cooking and like Taekwondo books, some books in Chinese, Chinese books. And I think that's my a push stuff that I need to really get rid of actually from high school. And if you go over here, this is what I was talking about all my piles of books I still need to read. I think I've done that. It's beautiful. Don't comment if you don't agree. <laughs> and for this book tag, I think I'm just gonna tag anyone we don't get to see your books. So if you feel that you don't film in front of your bookshelf often or you just film in a part of your bookshelf, please feel free to use this opportunity to use this tag and show us your beautiful bookshelves. I hope you had fun. This tag is a ton of fun. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye.